According to Vedanta, happiness belongs only to the Atman, not to your mind, nor to the objects outside. It belongs only to the Atman. To the extent your mind is able to reflect that Anand, that joy, to that extent you will be happy. So, sir, Monye Kotha. If the mind is sattvic, pure, able to reflect the inner, already inherent happiness, which is an intrinsic part of your being, you will always be happy. If the mind is not able to do that, you will only be dependent upon objects to keep you somehow entertained. So you keep accumulating objects on the outside, which means what certain le level of training of mind is required in order to understand the intrinsic nature of happiness. You see, suppose, let me just give you an example. Let us take example of Puran Poli because we are in uh, Mumbai. Hmm? Now, somebody gets you one Puran Poli and you have it. Okay, it generated a certain level of happiness. Then second Puran Poli, you have it. Oh, then after that, enough. Now, how Vedanta will analyze this experience? It will tell you, you know, as soon as the Puran Poli came in front of you, your expectation of having a enjoy having enjoyment out of it created an agitation in your mind a very strong vritti in your mind that was you, you know any vritti any expectation any enjoyment in the mind is actually illumined by consciousness the atman behind the mind isn't it now that vritti was illumined by consciousness you had that uh, puran poli so the, the desire, the agitation was assuaged to a certain extent. That was also illumined by consciousness. And assuaging the vritti of agitation is what you are calling happiness. And you are superimposing that on the Puran Poli. You created an agitation. Did you get the point? You created an, an agitation. And you assuaged an agitation. And the peace you got from it, you superimposed on the object outside. If you don't create the agitation at all, there will be nothing to assuage, there will be nothing to fulfill. And if you keep the mind very pure and clean, sattvic, the whole intrinsic happiness of the Atman will get reflected in the mind. So you have happiness without the object. Once more, I will help you analyze the situation. Please observe this carefully. Any object of enjoyment, say a rasgulla comes in front of you or a puran poli comes in front of you, the expectation to enjoy, get enjoyment out of that creates the agitated vritti in your mind, the desire to enjoy. Then consciousness is illumining that vritti in your mind. Once you have that eatable, the mind is assuaged a bit, which means it calms down a bit. Again consciousness is illumining that vritti and the mind is declaring, you see, that that object gave you this calmness, this happiness, which is a wrong interpretation. The agitation and the assuaging of that agitation, both are the creation of the mind. And the wrong interpretation also is a creation of the mind. Happiness only belongs to consciousness. It is a property only of the Atman, reflected in the mind and wrongly superimposed on the object. This is the Vedantic understanding of happiness. If you keep the mind very pure and clear and don't create unnecessary agitations there, that happiness will descend into your mind even without the object. Try it in your meditation and see a very calm, peaceful, balanced, absolutely pure, clear state of mind will bring happiness by itself. We have all felt this, isn't it? Hmm? When you feel bhakti for Thakur, when you feel a deep sense of calmness in your own system, you know you are happy without any object. But always this misunderstanding happens because of the nature of mind. Mind is gripped in maya. Eta ke bole vishaya vishayi adhyas. Which means the nature of the vishayi and Vishaya has been confused. You have superimposed the joy born of self and reflected of the mind on the object. And you are declaring the object is the cause for my happiness. That is why you will keep chasing the object until you, you are able to understand at least this much 
that no happiness is a state of my mind so this is the first step to coming out of this adhyas to understand happiness is not inherent in the object it is a state of my mind and the second step is to understand it is not even a state of my mind it is a property of my self of the atman within me reflected in my mind and superimposed on the object so a puro circle ta nije kai katte hobe eta bujhe nite hobe how it is working how my mind is working the mind is up to all tricks because it is under the grip of maya it is uh, adhyas is part of your mental function that is why there is a kind of haziness in understanding happiness but if you observe it clearly in a state of mind which is close to samadhi you will see this very clearly that how i am fooling myself the in happiness inherent to me which is part of my being i invested that in the mind into the mind and the mind is by nature chanchal it will throw it on an object it will superimpose it on an object and give all credit to all kinds of objects around you so the aim of your life becomes collecting this collecting that holding this holding so many things investing in relationships investing in so many people so that i require people to keep me happy i require the mobile phone to keep me calm unless messages are constantly coming well it means nobody loves me nobody wants me all these silly conclusions and investiture of your psychic energy into wrong thoughts happens because of our inability to understand the signs of happiness it ad apni niche theke dekhun how clear and uh, absolute this knowledge is it is happening in your own system if you calm the mind i told you till the level of going into samadhi to that extent if you calm the mind this will become a very clear thing you are mistaking something for happiness and you are giving the credit to the wrong objects it are sambandhe ekta khub sundor golpo ache jeta apnake bolbo there is a very beautiful illustration of this phenomenon in the buddha's life hmm? this happened when gautam buddha after his enlightenment he was moving around in those forests full of bliss full of joy and trying to analyze the human enigma the human situation why there is so much suffering why are we alienated from these fundamental truths about our own life he, when he was thinking of this he suddenly saw there a colony of lepers hmm? lepers leprosy ridden patients in those days there were no multi speciality hospitals you know so there were no such medical relief and so lepers were actually quarantined they were uh, sent into the forest where they created a colony and they would live there food would be would, would be placed at the edge of the forest every day and the lepers would take that food and they would live in that colony in the forest so suddenly the buddha came upon a colony of lepers and you know what they were doing first of all leprosy what does it do it causes a lot of itching in the hands in the feet a lot of itching and itching 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 it creates sores still the itching does not stop so further itching it creates wounds and khoye jay puro hat apnara hoy to dekhechen so it's a very pathetic situation still it keeps itching and the wounds there will be pus and blood and everything oozing out of it but the itching does not stop it is such a painful situation to overcome that pain these lepers used to light a bonfire morning and evening and burn their wounds in that bonfire to get rid of this pain and they would call this experience happiness relief watching this the buddha said he was stunned at what they were calling happiness and he said you know the leprosy ridden patient is the desire ridden mind it will itch unstoppably because the desire is there the agitation has been created you itch and itch you create a sore further you itch and itch you create a wound then to assuage that wound the pain born of that wound you will yes you will hold that wound on fire you will burn that the wound of your mind on the 
fire of sense pleasure the result will be more wounds but you will call that happiness see how he is analyzing the human situation why is it that our mind does not understand these simple facts of life a very sattvic state of mind naturally brings happiness but no we will create an agitation we will create a sore and a wound burn it on the fire of sense pleasure and then that we want to call that happiness why do we do this this is simply because the mind lacks training and spiritual practice shejane bhajanananda is so important getting a taste of higher joys in life sadhana that is why it is so important once you get a taste for bhakti thakur eta koto bhabe bolechen bhakti shar bolechen jivane shar holo bhakti once you get a taste for these higher emotions you get a taste for higher awareness you will not invest your energy in burning wounds you will not invest your energies in chasing objects you will not make the wrong equations so this basic understanding must come into our life amra thakur mar jivani podi we must be able to draw from that life that these lives are so independent of external circumstance so independent of external objects please observe and see thakur er jivani apni dekhun once you know uh, this dayanand saraswati came and saw thakur samadhi thakur samadhi te boshe achen and seeing the look on his face and the tears rolling down his cheeks dayanand saraswati said these mahapurush these people have actually tasted the butter or amra ghol khachi we are drinking the butter milk the very look on thakur's face would change he would radiate light and he would radiate such bliss that the people around him tar bhave bhavit hoy jetora i don't know how to translate this into english they would catch that bhav perfectly you know thakur jakun bhav samadhi te he would dance in the room all the people would get into that mood like like actually a a whole multitude of bad people it would appear like that to a person who was not who does not did not know bhav samadhi it would appear like that like what is this mob up to they would all be dancing in ecstasy to it a key kore shambhav the luminosity of his mind ability to render this level of joy to other minds this is a possibility it a shambhav such a level of joy that it simply overflows and pours into other minds it a all uh, great souls are able to manifest this level of joy ek din keu thakur ke jigyasha koreche samadhi ki jinish what do you exactly feel in samadhi and thakur said will you understand if i say if a if a fish is released which was fish which was restricted to a pot is released into the waters of the ganges ganga jale jale chhede deva hoy that splashing joy of that fish something like that my fa- mind feels that liberation in samadhi that's why he could not contain himself see the nature of happiness it, it absorbs and consumes you isn't it the nature of the highest joy that which does not absorb you cannot give you joy knowing this you must distance yourself from merely sensory level happiness it simply doesn't befit us especially when we have come under the wing of thakur ma swami ji please see this there are such high flights of joy and bliss available to us so something a taste for that we must be able to get into this life get it in this life that is the whole purpose